Hello and thank you for joining me once again at Evolutionary Energy Arts. 2018 may be the year that we goes down as just simply being the year of the record fill in the blank. And we have so much change going on right now in, in the world. It's something that everybody's noticing, even, even the mainstream to a degree. Uh, we have record snowfall in Croatia, sub-zero temperatures on the Adriatic coast, and that's just 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 the beginning of it. You have record snowfall that hits Japan, record-breaking snow in central New York. It just goes on and on and on. We're having northeaster after northeaster uh, hitting. And uh, I am from Connecticut, so very, very used to how powerful a northeaster can be. And I do remember um, I lived two blocks from the beach. I remember going down to the beach during a northeaster in my Jeep. And, you know, there was like ice and slush that had made its way several blocks inland. And, and this is going to be the type of thing that's norm. Uh, what we saw with Sandy is something that will probably be repeated time and time again in the coming years. So there's one record falling after another. There's an incredible snowpack covering Montana's mountains. And uh, the word they're using is incredible. You know, and of course they have also had record breaking cold. Um, I'm not one that tolerates the cold well at all, so just thinking about Montana in the in the winter is scary to me. Uh, and the type of winter that they've had, it's just incredible. But here in Florida, we actually are having a lot of manatees die from the cold stress from the winter that we're having down here. And it's been unusual. And talking to all the native Floridians that have been here many, many years, they all say they can't remember anything quite like this. Uh, today was a beautiful day. We hit about 78 over here in southwest Florida. But tomorrow, you know, the temperatures are only going to be in the 60s. And then overnight lows are going to be into the 40s, which is really unusual um, for this time of year. Because usually by the time you get to uh, mid-March and all, and it, it's pretty much summer. You know, that that's the way Florida is. And March equals summer. Um, but it's not the case this year because we keep going back and forth. And in the years to come, there will be less and less of the back and forth. And it's going to be more just plain cold. So it's a change that's here. It's, it's, it, this is a year of change. And it's a progression, you know. So we know it's going to get more intense. But this is the first year that we're really able to see that something is not quite normal and uh, it's everywhere so here we have severe flooding and this is in Kansas we've had some wild storm fronts uh, just incredible storm fronts going through with wild looking clouds and just you know so incredibly ominous looking uh, flooding is the number one killer as far as all severe weather events goes according to the National Weather Service And how wet was February in Hawaii? One spot got 52 inches of rain. Can you imagine that? 52 inches of rain just in February. That's pretty insane. And so you could see it's everywhere. And actually Hawaii right now, they're looking to get a ton more rain uh, in the next day or so. So all this crazy weather is going to infect, it's going to affect all the food production that's going on. It's going to affect, you know, transporting things from one area to another. We have thousands of sheep that were left dead by the beast from the East Storm across Cumbria, UK. And uh, these poor sheep were, you know, frozen <laughs> and, and stuck in snow. And... Uh, it actually costs the farmers money to dispose of the bodies and it's just a you know tragic situation there evacuated evacuation and roads closed as flash floods hit Hawke's Bay New Zealand so you have New Zealand with incredible flooding going on right now 
extreme cold results in severe agricultural damage across Europe. Food prices are rising. So this is part of what we're seeing. And again, this is just the beginning. You know, this is a transitional year. So in the next several years, things are going to intensify. Record-breaking cold temperatures that hit Europe just before the start of 2018, claiming lives of at least 50 people, are also responsible for severe agricultural damage. The full extent of the damage won't be clear for quite some time. Severe damage is already evident, and some food prices have already gone up. So how high are the food prices going to go? That's the question. And then long term, we have to really, our governments have to have a clear and focused long term plan for the situation that we're finding ourselves in. Otherwise, it's going to be chaos. Tongans prepare for possible food shortages after cyclones. So you're going to have more severe weather of all types going on. And so we need to be prepared. So again, they're looking for food shortages there. Higher food prices sap the British consumer spending. People want to shop, but inflation means they cannot afford non-essential items. And Britain's got more than one thing cooking here with the food issues. You know, of course, the storms, the beasts from the east did a lot of damage, and that's going to cause food prices to rise. You know, just the fact that <coughs> long term we're going to have less area in which to grow food because you know as the cold weather sinks in you're going to have less zones where you're going to be able to produce food for the planet which still has a rising population and now again in uh, Great Britain they have other issues going on including what the ramifications of the Brexit that could affect that as well so we have a drone delivering bread to fellow citizens amidst food scarcity in Ireland. Facing storm-related food shortages in Clare, Ireland, which is actually where my family's from. One generous citizen used his own UAV to deliver bread. Pretty cool. But again, food shortages are hitting. Higher prices at the grocery store, food inflation is rising after two years of decline. And we're going to be noticing it, as well as you're going to notice that the quality of a lot of things will, will end up dropping as well. Brexit UK faces unprecedented food crisis if no trade deal secured with EU. So Britain's got a lot going on right now. Now, we do have a lot of volcanic activity going on, and that's only going to increase as well. And so we have a large explosive eruptions now at Mount Shimoadaki, Shinmo and that's in Japan. And that's not the only place that we're having uh, eruptions going on in active volcanoes. There's, there's many of them. And again, as always, I'll have the links in here for you guys to see. So, you know, there's many volcanoes going off all around the world. And that's going to just increase the speed at which the, the planet's going to cool. And, you know, the biggest thing, again, is the pole shift overall. And this article is talking about the Earth's flip-flopping magnetic field, the fact that it's screwing with the satellites over Africa. And Africa, again, is, is the source region for the South Atlantic anomaly. And that's an area where... You know, there's a, a decrease in the shields, and there's a ton of radiation coming in. And so it's going to be a, a danger zone to travel in. And areas like that are going to increase as the shields come down, as the magnetosphere declines in power, which it is. And it's declining rapidly. So how long do we have? We, we really don't know, you know, but... At the speed at which it, it's increasing, many are starting to say it could happen within our lifetimes. And again, it also depends on how old you are, obviously. But it's it's decreasing very, very fast. As we have touched on before, uh, it was like 1842 to 2000, we lost 10%. And then 2000 to 2015, we lost another 5%. 
and then 2015 to now we've lost about another 5% so we're down 20% when you get to 50% you're gonna have major issues going on and and that could be reached if, if it's going this fast if you lost 5% in three years you know just do the math it, it's it's not gonna be that far off so there's so many things that it could do obviously you know it's going to disrupt satellites power lines it, it, it affects ocean currents it affects animal migration patterns um, all those things are affected by the shields going down and having more radiation come in you have harmful cosmic rays that come through that you know statistically you would expect it to increase cancer rates it's, it's just something you would expect um, and it, it's definitely something that we have to prepare for and then of course you have the whole thought of crustal displacement in addition to the magnetic issues and again you know some people don't believe in that some do you know scientists disagree but there's a lot of evidence that, that it is something that does happen so a new study has been conducted on the South Atlantic anomaly in Africa. Will the magnetic pole shift occur soon? And, and it's everywhere you look. There's, there's, you know, a ton of articles out there on this now. So this is really, you know, it's hitting mainstream. Yes, it's, it's not on ABC or NBC right now or, you know, CNN or Fox. But it won't be long before it's on all those two because it's just something that's undeniable. And... It's something that, you know, is is happening. And Robert Felix is the gentleman that wrote Not by Fire, But by Ice. So he is really the trailblazer in this whole field. And he was saying back in the 90s that we're heading into an ice age. And he was saying also then at that time that we're heading into a pole shift. And he believes the two are completely connected. And um, he's, he's definitely a, a brilliant gentlemen and and I would strongly recommend you guys like listening to him or getting this book uh, this is magnetic reversals and evolutionary leaps so there's a good news bad news scenario the the bad news I'll give you first and that's that when these situations happen generally there's a huge die-off of species and you know many many species die <laughs> and they uh, excuse me as this one sounds awful ominous and pops on <laughs> um, you you lose many species many species die off there's there's huge huge die offs when this happens conversely when we get through this time frame there are brand new species that are more adapted and more evolved that all of a sudden pop up so it's after the you know negative scenario that happens that ends up bringing about something positive so as I've been saying and, and he he, th he agrees with the same premise that you know I've always thought you know we are getting bombarded by a lot more cosmic rays but they are going to trigger a next evolutionary step in human in humans and in consciousness itself and he gets into that in this book and I would definitely definitely recommend you guys check it out he's done um, several podcasts and uh, he's he's fascinating to to listen to and he was dead on about not you know about the ice age and his book not by fire but by ice which has you know been out uh, over 20 years now so he was so far ahead of the curve and so what he is talking about is that yes we're, we're facing a pole reversal we're facing an ice age yes there's going to be tons of species you know that are going to go extinct but at the same time there's going to be an evolutionary leap like we have we haven't had before and so when you look at humanity and and what we've come from there's all these all these dead ends and then something else pops up I mean you see it time and time and time again there are so many different subspecies going all the way back and were some of these triggered by 
decreases in the magnetosphere and increases in cosmic radiation very well could be you know it's really interesting you know to look at it in the time frame so it could be something that we are facing which could be a little bit of a silver lining in some ways so as always please uh, give a thumbs up share and subscribe and wake up as many people as you can and as always there is a silver lining to everything that we're going to face and we need to wake up as many people as possible so that there's less panic more people understand what's happening um, you know there was another article which I didn't link in here yet but it was talking about how in Russia you know Putin has made so many uh, underground safety zones you know they have basically like bunkers and and they're not necessarily just in case of world war three because you know some sources are saying that this is really about preparation for the pole shift to try to get as many civilians to safety underground and where you know they would be safer during a pole shift and unfortunately none of that's been done in the west and they're there really is a disparity when you look at it in that sense um, because you know as far as bunkers for the common people in case of World War three and or pole shift you know places to evacuate to there's really nothing that the United States has done you know for the civilians you know and and say what you will about Russia but they could evacuate millions and and get them to safety you know underground and uh here in the west it's just the elite that have that and it's just really the uh the the power structure that are going to be able to access those type of places so these are the type of things we need to be preparing for and we need to have people in power that recognize the dangers of a pole shift and what it could do to people that are say in an area like the South Atlantic anomaly where you're exposed and that's going to increase you know it, it could increase to the point where there you won't be able to be anywhere in South America period you know because of the radiation coming in as well as the polar regions um, many of you guys might be familiar with um, suspicious observers which is a YouTube channel and uh, it's a fabulous one and it's extremely intelligently done and very very scientifically backed up and so the scientist that runs that YouTube channel he chose uh, New Mexico as the place where he is gonna go and then he is he has relocated his family there because he does feel that we are going to be facing huge tidal waves we are going to be facing volcanoes going off and all these things so he he figured that was one of the safest zones and you know to be in and because um, I believe he was located somewhere um, on the east coast right on the water and so these are things we need to worry about and and well don't worry but just prepare you know just prepare we don't want to feed into the fear or the phobias but at the same time being unprepared would be very very neglectful so as always please thumbs up helps to help the uh, support the channel and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and share with your friends so we can wake up as many people as possible i thank you for joining me once again at evolutionary energy arts stay safe and take care